Can computation photography really improve your game? Let's find out. As you can see here, like absolutely tons of people here because of change of guard this morning and uh, I finished a client shoot early in the morning and uh, but it's really packed. I don't know why people just queue up and, and to be quite honest, I think it's, it's actually wasting a lot of taxpayers' money. It, it, you know, the amount of policemen actually on patrol and guarding this place every single morning. I'm not joking. And, and, and to be quite frank, I don't know like whether, whether the income generated, generating from these crowds here is enough to cover all this police um, uh, expense that, that we actually have to uh, uh, pay up basically. And uh, well, I don't know, let me know your thoughts about this. Uh, but I think it's actually, well, it's amazing. It's attractive and that's why people come here to watch the change of guards. And I know it's a really cool thing to do, but seriously, five, six years ago, I don't see that many police, you know, like now it's every, every single morning, just because of the change of guard, you really have tons and tons of police in patrol. Like they probably have like, probably half the Scotland Yard actually just come over here and uh, to, to do this. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to what we're going to talk about today is the uh, computational photography. Um, I have to say Olympus has always been at the forefront of this particular field. And uh, let's go back to the history a little bit, shall we? Right, okay. Um, computational photography. I want to highlight you know, why I actually said Olympus is actually at the forefront. Let's go back to you know, the very first time we actually have the feature called live composite and live bulb. Um, you know, before that happens, you know, we have to go the old way where we have to basically time ourselves based on the ISO and everything or a bit of a try and error depending on what sort of uh, effect that you want to achieve, like light trail, how long the exposure you want to do. And uh, so there's a lot of calculations there. To our advantage nowadays, you know, or Olympus users at least, and, uh, and also a certain number of Panasonic users because they just have the live composite feature uh, in the latest cameras. Uh, but having said that, you know, uh, Olympus user has enjoyed this particular function for quite a while now. Um, it's actually really cool. I'm not talking about Fay Boker, which is all computation photography as well. It's all part of it. And uh, it's actually very interesting to now have that. Um, but let's go back to the, the live composite. I think is it really cut down a lot of the guesswork from a lot of people who like to do some low light photography, night photography, long exposures, for instance, and everything like that. So making sure that you don't overexpose your shot. I remember in the film days when I used to, uh, started to do long exposure at nighttime, uh, very often I run into trouble where I'm overexposing uh, the details and things like that. Especially there are techniques of like, you know, putting card in front of the camera for uh, to avoid uh, the, the film being overexposed. And then you just kind of let, let go for every time, you know, every certain amount of time you let uh, you open the shutter. Shutter? Yeah, the, the blind basically. And uh, so this is sort of thing that uh, I used to do. And then uh, it's quite cumbersome. It's a lot of guesswork and, and then you have to do a lot of practice where I'm not specialized in nighttime photography. So like that would take me ages to get something decent. Um, but with the light composite and live bulb, it makes a lot of get guesswork just gone, completely gone. You know, like I can now do a lot of really cool night shots uh, without overexposing anything. I can get the effect that I want and uh, seeing live building up on the screen, it just super super cool uh, i like the features a lot and then uh, this is i think the time when computational photography really helps people who know what they want and also what they want to achieve in the minimum amount of time so the question is will computational photography improve your game well to a certain extent yes and um, it helps you become a better photographer depending on what you do. Um, for instance, um, like if you're a long-term nighttime photographer, uh, you are dedicated to do all these long exposure shots and things like that, these will get you the perfect, and I mean perfect shots every single time if you know what you're doing. Um, for people like myself, and uh, yeah, I'm having fun with the live composite and live bulb thing, and certainly it makes photography fun again. And uh, especially for 
any sort of photographer enthusiast and uh, definitely and I, I have no doubt it's helping everybody um, but that's a but though you know if you don't rely on these features to make money it, it certainly is a fun factor but you have to consider something um, for instance um, if you're just using this for the sake of it and not knowing how to take better nighttime photography to start with this could mean that you're relying on it to do uh, everything and that's the wrong approach in terms of photography like any technology these days you know they are there to assist you uh, I, I don't think they can analyze the whole scene for you uh, it doesn't take away the, you know the fact that you need to still compose the uh, the photograph correctly you still need to expose the thing correctly I, I mean I know it kind of like the, the feature that I mentioned it does help you in terms of exposures and things like that but still you know you you really need to know what sort of effect that you want to create so it doesn't take away any of that you know and uh, it's a piece of program it's not a brain but then I'm gonna come to AI in a minute and uh, so you have to understand that is very important you still have to know what you're doing what you want to achieve as a photographer and that way the computation photography will help okay right let's sit down here to continue our discussion with artificial intelligence the AI uh, yeah it's getting everywhere now and I think every manufacturer is, is trying to get a hands-on AI photography um, which is kind of still computer so I would still group it into computational photography um, is part of it but would AI also help your game well that depends on what you do uh, in Olympus term is deep learning you know and uh, so they're trying to throw like hundreds of thousands of images of plane, trains and cars to, to the computer so hopefully it recognizes when it sees one and uh, so that, that's how they train the AI in terms of like trying to uh, recognize certain subjects um, so would that help? Well, that depends what you do professionally and what sort of photographer you're into. If you are a train spotter or plane spotter professionally, motor journalist, for instance, is a must. I think it's very cool. It's very effective. It's probably the most effective AI tracking system I've seen compared to all the other things out there at the moment. Um, so it's pretty awesome, to be quite honest. Um, but for what about general public um, like myself I mean I, I shoot portrait I think facial recognition or human tracking is actually more beneficial to me I think that might come and then uh, but I think that doesn't take away the human interaction side of it because you as a photographer still have to control certain elements the AI will help if you are doing this like on a day-to-day -day basis uh, because it will help taking away one of the elements you are constantly worrying about is the getting the sharp shot on the subject uh, with AI uh, tr uh, subject trackings now you can work you, can, you don't have to worry uh, about you know um, uh, the things that you want to photograph is not in focus but you still have to worry about the compositions and also exposure so you, you cannot take away with the elements there uh, so you just have to be very very careful uh, not to overthinking about AI and it's gonna be doing everything for you and it doesn't um, and I think that will continue the trend for a long long time and I don't think it, you know one day you're gonna pick up a camera and just say can you take a great shot for me I don't think that is going to happen because he can't think for you. He doesn't know what you think is a great shot. It's, it has no personality in terms of a style uh, or, or it will have one style for kind of everything. So that may not be good anyway. Uh, so, but you know what I mean, you know, like every photographer has his own distinct style and that is going to continue no matter what. And it's an art in my mind. So uh, uh, every developer, or oh, developer, every photographer has an eye, you know, they, they see certain things in a very different perspective and that's something you have to remember. So AI computational photography will definitely help your game if you know what you're doing. But if you're not, if you're just a novice, if you're just a beginner, don't try to rely on all this computational photography to help your game because it won't if you don't understand what you're doing. And uh, that might actually work in reverse. You know, it might cripple you in the long term. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let me know what you think about computation photography whether you agree with my points or not uh, yeah leave the com leave some comment down below and we can have a nice discussions there and uh, what about fate boker let me know about let me know what you think about fate bokers and uh, you know I already mentioned that you know it may mature at some point and whether we're gonna see fate bokers in 
photography. So like, if you have f2 lens, it might turn into f.95. <laughs> I don't know whether that will happen. And uh, but you know, you never know. You never know. Uh, someday it may happen. And uh, what? What, what sort of thing that you may want to see as well in terms of uh, computational photography or even AI? What sort of thing you may expect to see in the near future in terms of photography? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a nice talk. I'll be interested to see. Anyway, um, see you next time. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm uh, yeah. After the heat, actually, you know, so many people outside, and to be quite honest, I'm, I'm just uh, yeah, going getting a little bit overwhelmed. So uh, anyway, until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye now.